السلام علیکم میں ہوں عالیہ موزم اینڈ ویلکم ٹو مائی پروگرام انسپریشن بائی عالیہ موزم آج ہم آؤٹ ڈور میں آئے ہیں کیونکہ آج ہم اپنے آنٹرپرنورشپ کے سیگمنٹ میں ایک انٹرویو کریں گے یہ بہت ہماری خاص مہمان ہے اور وہ آپ کو ڈفرینٹ ٹپس بتائیں گی ورک پلیس کی اور لائف ٹائم کی سکسیس کی تو وہ ہم اپنے آنٹرپرنورشپ کے سیگمنٹ میں ڈسکس کریں گے ابھی ہم بات کرتے ہیں پرسنل گرومنگ کی جس میں کہ ہم لوگ بات کریں گے کمیونیکیشن اسکلس کی کمیونیکیشن اسکلس میں آج ہم ڈسکس کریں گے آئی لینگویج کو کہ آئی لینگویج اس کے دو اسپیکٹس ہوتے ہیں ایک جگہ ہم یہ بتائیں گے کہ آئی لینگویج یہاں نہیں استعمال کرنی چاہیے اور ایک ہے کہ کہاں پہ ہمیں استعمال کرنی چاہیے ابھی ہم ڈسکس کریں گے کہ ہمیں جب ہم کسی کے ساتھ ڈیلنگ کر رہے ہوں اور ہمیں کوئی چیز سمجھ نہ آ رہی ہو یا ہم لوگ کنفیوز ہوں یا ہمارا کوئی گلا ہو یا ہماری کوئی ریزینٹمنٹ ہو تو ہم اس میں آئی لینگویج یوز کریں گے اور اس میں یو کو ہم اوائڈ کریں گے جیسے کہ ہم کسی کو بتانا چاہتے ہیں ایکسپریس کرنا چاہتے ہیں کہ یہ ہم یہ کام ہمیں برڈن لگ رہا ہے انسٹیڈ آف یو آر گیونگ می ٹو مچ ورک آپ کہہ سکتے ہیں آئی فیل اوور ویلم بائی دا اوور ورک برڈن تو اسی طرح سے مطلب لائک like اگلے کو جب اس طرح کی لینگویج جب آپ یوز کرتے ہیں اس طرح کی اسٹیٹمنٹس یوز کرتے ہیں تو اگلا آفینسو نہیں ہوتا اس کو یہ نہیں لگتا کہ آپ اس سے شکایت کر رہے ہیں جب آپ اپنے آپ کو رکھ کے بتاتے ہیں تو اس سے لوگوں کو یہ فیل ہوتا ہے کہ آپ وہ ایمپتھیٹک ہو جاتے ہیں آپ کی طرف وہ پھر آپ کے بارے میں سوچنا شروع کرتے ہیں تو یہ اسٹیپ کو ضرور ذہن میں رکھیے گا کہ آئی یوز کریں جب آپ کو کسی سے کوئی گلا یا کوئی شکایت یا کوئی آپ نے اپنی کمپلینٹ کرنی ہو اب ہم بات کریں گے مسز نبیلہ اختر سے جو کہ ریکٹ کمپنی کے ایچ آر ڈپارٹمنٹ کی بزنس ٹیم کو لیڈ کرتی ہیں اور ریکٹ کمپنی ریکگنائز ہے پاکستان میں جیسے کہ ڈیٹول برینڈ ہو گیا اسٹریپسلس ہو گیا ایچ آر ڈپارٹمنٹ جو ہے کمپنی کی بیک بون کہلاتا ہے تو آج ہم ہم مسز نبیلہ اختر سے کچھ ٹپس لیں گے کچھ کوشچنس پوچھیں گے جن کے وہ ہمیں آنسر دیں گی اور آئی ہوپ کہ آپ کو وہ آنسرس کافی آپ کے لیے ہیلپ فل ہوں گے جی مس نبیلہ آپ یہ بتائیے کہ کی آف سکسیس کیا ہے کی ٹو سکسیس دا موسٹ سکسیسفل پیپل آئی نو The biggest success they have is a plan. They have a plan. They know exactly what they want to do. They know exactly where they want to go. So what I would say is try and create a plan. So at work, think about what's the next career you want and write it down. Think about where you are now. Think about the capabilities, think about the skills and think about the experiences that you want to get to that plan. Not everyone has to have a five-year plan, but the most successful people do have a long-term plan. Break your plan down. So you might have a plan that I want to do this job by two years. So in my first year, in the first six months, I want to achieve these experiences, these capabilities and these skills. Break it down. So your plan could be broken down into six months, into one year, into two years. But write it down. It's very important to write your plan down. And then you'll have something tangible to look at and something tangible to achieve. Then when you've written down, for example, I don't know, your plan could be that you want to increase your digital skills, let's say. In order to increase your digital skills, what experiences would I need? Who do I need to talk to? What book do I need to read? What seminar do I need to attend? What job do I need to change? So the most important thing is to think about the gaps you have. I am here today, this is where I want to go, and this is the capability, skills, and experience gaps that I have. If you do that, you will then have an ambition, and you'll know where you want to go. That would be my top tips. Okay, our second question is, how do you resolve the conflict between the workplace environment? The important thing about resolving conflict at work is understand what the issue is first. So identify, is it a behavior that caused a conflict with the other person? Is it an activity that they did that caused it? So be very clear in your mind, what is the conflict that is hurting you or causing you to feel sad or is an issue for you? Then the most important thing about resolving a conflict is to speak to the other person. Um, because if you do that, then you'll resolve it much quicker. If you do it through a third party, then the message that you're trying to deliver or the impact of how it's made you feel will be diluted. So the first thing I think you need to do, this does require you being brave. 
So if you can be brave, is to have a conversation with the other person and you find an, find an opportunity to do that over a coffee or, or a time where you feel quite relaxed. And then tell the other person, what was it about the issue that caused concern for you? Was it their behavior? Was it something they did? And then describe to them how it made you feel. And then hopefully they will understand that because help them, the, the clearer you are, the easier it will be in order for you to resolve. So tell them when it happened, what time it was, all of these things, because sometimes people forget the situation or they forget when it happened. So the other most important thing about resolving conflict is do it as soon as possible. Don't leave it months and months because then you won't remember the situation. So once you've identified what the issue is, speak with the individual in a relaxed environment over a coffee or something and help them understand what the issue was. Then give them an opportunity to respond. Do they, un do they remember the issue? Um, do they understand how it made you feel? And then you can have the conversation with them about that. And hopefully they'll understand from your point of view. And if they do that, then that will be the best way to resolve. But I also understand that sometimes you can't always resolve the conflict yourself because it may be the relationship is broken, it may be the things have gone too far and you need a third person. And in that situation, find a third person that both parties know quite well. And maybe you can bring somebody else in and help them understand the issue. And maybe they can, on your behalf, talk to them. Sometimes you can bring a third party in to mediate. So you can bring a third party in to talk with both of you to resolve the conflict. But the most important skill that an individual needs to have is empathy. It's really important to be empathetic. Even if the other person is not empathetic, if you can lead with empathy and try and describe the situation, most people will not have an issue with empathy because most people understand that how you feel is how you feel and they will want to correct how you feel. So I think lead with empathy and try and have the conflict resolution as quickly as possible to the event. So that would be my way of resolving conflict. Okay, Nabila, we have another question which is very important. Hai. How do you create a balance in work life and uh, your personal life as well? Okay, one of the most important things about creating work-life balance as a leader is to lead by example. Because you would have heard the term shadow of a leader. Our people, our teams follow what we do. So, I need to set an example. So if I'm working late, then I'm making people work late. But if I work normal hours, nine to five, and I'm very open about my activities outside of work or before work, then my team will say, oh, if my leader can do this, so can I. So I think the most important thing is lead by example as a leader. We have an opportunity to allow our people. I think the most important thing for a leader is to give permission. People look at a leader to give permission. So I should allow, I should talk to my individuals about what are you doing for after school activities? What are you doing? Do you go to the gym? That's great. Take the time out, go to the gym. Because Creating a work-life balance is about trust. You have to trust your team to be able to do the right thing. So if they will be more productive if you allow them to have time off to do other things. Like if I have to go to the doctors for an appointment or if I have to go look after an elderly parent or whatever, allow them the time to do that during the work day. But they will be so grateful for that that they will work harder and they will make that time back. So work-life balance is based on a few things. It's based on trust. Leaders to give trust that the individuals will do the right thing. They will put the effort in, but that they will also have the freedom and the flexibility to also do the other things in their life that's important for them. Their hobbies, their children, looking after their parents, going to the gym, all of those things. So allow them the flexibility to do that. People will follow what we do. So set the example, let them follow. इसके साथ ही हमारे प्रोग्राम का वक्त खत्म होता चलता है अपने कमेंट्स जरूर हमें बताइएगा अपना ख्याल रखिएगा मास्सलाम